Welcome back. Now let's talk about Nigeria's forex market now, especially as the outlook of the Naira remains tied to the state of the CBN's intervention in the spot and forward markets this week, as well as the better price discovery in the INE FX window. A forex dealer at the UBA Group, Chuka Nwajuku, joins us now to tell us what to expect this week from the forex market. Many thanks for joining us, Chuka. What are we expecting from the central bank this week in terms of intervention in the FX market? Chuka, what are we expecting from the central bank this week, especially in terms of interventions in the forex market? Oh, we seem to be having uh, pitches. Hello, can you hear me? Very well. Go on, Chuka. I can hear you. Okay. Um, presently, the market is trading um, at the same level as it is open. We've been required day so far. Um, looking to um, CBN's um, um, intervention for the week, uh, we have said that CBN will continue to intervene at the asset market. Um, presently, the IIE window, uh, which is an uh, um, important export window, is uh, pretty much very active. Um, is, um, the IIE window has been a game changer as regards um, the forest um, and demand and supply. So um, a lot of customers are taking a, a great bit of advantage on that um, window, and then um, a lot of activities are happening there presently. What about the exchange rate expectations this week, especially as global oil prices are now trading around $52 a barrel? Yeah, thank you. Um, the exchange rate um, um, is, is looking um, um, looking pretty good. Um, Naira, uh, we expect that Naira we continue to appreciate, um, especially with the stability in the oil market. Uh, presently trading, like you rightly said, at 52 levels. Um, we expect that um, you know this will aid the um, the foreign reserve, and then what once that is done. Um, CBN will have more muscle to, um, to intervene more. So, yeah, um, it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe one is excited about the level of the oil, um, 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 oil price um, presently, and then we expect that um, this will help push up the, um, the foreign reserves, like I said earlier, and also the um, appreciation on the, on the Naira. Well, um, also, we also noticed that um, the... Um, the prior market too um, has been um, Naira has, has been appreciating on that um, on that market as well, and then um, we expect that you know all things being equal, um, this appreciation will continue. Well, forex dealer at the UBA Group, Chuka Mwachuku, many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us on the program, and of course, enjoy the rest of your day. We're moving on now, the new partnership for Africa's development, NEPAD, and Nigeria Agribusiness Group are collaborating to boost agriculture productivity in Africa in about, by about 6% in Africa. While the two bodies agree that partnership between government and the private sector must be strengthened in the country to realize this objective. At a consultative meeting in Lagos, investors in NEPAD maintain the capacity building and funding are major areas that must be addressed for growth. In the total value of agri, there is no any continent, I believe, in the world that has the potentials in all the total value chains in agriculture in Africa. With the population of Africa, with the land mass we have, with the uh, labor force, with the uh, value of our labor force, uh, the only thing that is really holding us back is lack of capital and knowledge on adding value and consistency of our government <clears throat> and leaders to focus on these potentials that we have. I've heard the gentleman talking about the cassava. You can see uh, the potential is huge, 4.8 million tons. I don't think it's, uh, it's an impossibility even to reach 2020 if we have the right policies and the consistency of our government uh, to achieve that and the right training, capacity building for our small farmers, medium and the large farmers. And also when we move to that, also our leaders do not yet understand the potential that we are all sitting on. If only our leaders can understand that uh, we will have no business in poverty in Africa and no need of any aid 
from any other country, they would have probably focused far more energy in developing and providing the right policy framework. A simple example, you're talking about starch, industrial use, and so on. If you look at even the cassava, why should cassava starch be more expensive to use in your flour mix for the flour mills? It's because of the capacity uh, uh, yield per hectare and the added value and the cost of finance. The, the, the appeal is going to be for the Ni Nigerian investors and the practitioners in the agri-value chain there's need for a lot more sacrifice because at that, the production level, those people need a lot of support. Uh, in, in a way that uh, their participation is not go just going to be at the low end, but also not at the production level alone, but throughout the entire agricultural value chain. That they produce, they should be encouraged to go into the packaging, they should be encouraged and supported to go into the marketing. And so, for us in the past, sometimes too, we are looking at the issue of cooperatives. People have to begin to get organized. And when they become more organized, in terms of their engagement with financial institutions, of course, the credibility, they will be able to present the credibility that the banks can then bank upon in terms of uh, uh, recoveries on whatever loans the people take. And so, for me, I would rather just say that at the focus should be building up the capacity of the local farmers. Egypt's Prime Minister has appointed Mohamed Saleh as the new chairman of the country's stock exchange. Saleh, who helped to launch the first weighted index on the EGX during his time as vice chairman from July 2010 to October 2011, will replace Mohamed Omran, whose four-year term ends this week. Nearly 270 companies are listed on the EGX and the government is launching an IPO program that will offer shares in dozens of state-owned companies over the next three to five years in areas such as petroleum, services, chemicals, shipping, maritime and real estate to help boost the state finances. And the governments of Tanzania and Uganda have laid the foundation for the construction of a $3.55 billion crude export pipeline that will pump Ugandan oil for international markets. The 1,445-kilometer project is set for completion by 2020 and will stretch from Landok to Uganda's western region where crude reserves were discovered in 2006 to Tanzania's Indian Ocean seaport of Tanga. Tanzanian President John Magufuli, alongside his Ugandan counterpart Yoweri Museveni are asking the three joint venture partners to speed up construction of the pipeline. Uganda estimates overall crude reserves at 6.5 billion barrels, while recoverable reserves are seen at between 1.4 billion and 1.7 billion barrels. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adivayo.